Now, from Into Tomorrow, this is an ITTV special report. Welcome Into Tomorrow, I'm Dave Graveline. Back in 1997, the first Intel Developer Forum was held here in San Francisco. Not a big event, no buzz, no media coverage. You might say it was about the size of one of Intel's chips. Only about 200 people showed up, developers of course. Well, some 14 years later, there's now over 5,000 people attending here in San Francisco. It's Intel's biggest show and tell. You know what a little collaboration has done to the youth and pop culture where these kids, you know, they're, they're not afraid to express their excitement towards technology without being, you know, pointed at or made fun of by, you know, what was considered popular culture yesterday. So that, that's fresh to see that 13 year old like, you know, excited about building computers. That's dope. Cool. How do you use technology? Oh, I make my music with technology, run my businesses with on uh in the cloud, I, uh, you know, it amplifies my thoughts, allows me to share my thoughts. You know, my computer is like, you know, it's like uh, Picasso's paintbrush in, uh, in Canvas. That's, my, that's my, my computer, my little laptop with my core processor. Uh, IDF we were actually demonstrating the latest uh, uh, all-in-one segments uh, the variety of designs new designs that are actually built on top of a uh, desktop but it's not really a desktop it's extended much beyond that you can see the reclining uh, displays and uh, let me just demo that real quick uh, these are kind of uh, some of the cool latest designs I work at the Intel Wireless Display Group, and we're showing um, Wireless Display version 2 and our CE enabling mostly today. So uh, we've shown in the past that we have five adapters. You can see them in the middle behind me. What's new for this uh, IDF is that we're embedding this technology into TVs, like the one on the left, and other SOC vendors, like the one on the right, uh, Realtek, as well as Wonder Media. So we're going to see this technology embedded in connected devices without any extra hardware or firmware. It's a, so it's basically free on the laptop as a software application and soon be free as a connected application in these uh, consumer electronic devices. Simon is the personification of the, um, the intelligent connected solutions world that embedded technology makes possible. He's a collaborative being that everyone is co-creating here on the show floor. And just in the same way that embedded technology works with people to kind of create and enable amazing things in our lives, Simon is something we're all building together and making happen over the course of the next day and a half. As you can see, lots of cool stuff here at the Technology Showcase, like Simon right here. Very neat. And we have more stuff for you. All you got to do is log on to intotomorrow.com. We have video of all the interviews we did here for our radio broadcast, so make sure you check them out. This special broadcast from IDF is brought to you in part by NewegBusiness.com. Do you have a small business with IT needs? Visit NewegBusiness.com for their everyday solutions and deals on business electronics and office must-haves. IT is made simple by NewegBusiness.com, where once you know, you Newegg. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and other video sites where we post all of our IT TV reports. Don't miss them, so subscribe. Meantime, let's head over back to the technology showcase here at IDF. 
Lots to see, folks. And now, <laughs> the moment you've all been waiting for, symbolizing the biggest opportunity of a generation. Let's illuminate the big guy himself. Let's see the amazing, intelligent, connected solutions right here, personified in larger-than-life form. He's ready. I know you guys are ready. Let's welcome. Let's give a hand. Introducing Simon. Woo! Yeah. So, as Intel's futurist, it's my job to look. 10 to 15 years out into the future to have an understanding of how people will want to act and interact with technology. So I have these really interesting conversations with people about what's the future that they want, what's the future that we don't want, how do we make the future better. And then I ask myself, on the other side, when you have all of these small little ways, Intel keeps making it smaller and faster, what happens when you've got chips in everything? And all of a sudden, computing kind of disappears and we're surrounded by intelligence. So what happens when you have more data than is humanly knowable available to more devices than there are people on the planet? What we are showing is a facial detection at pedestrian crossing. Then we have uh, so-called the sign recognition. Uh, then we have application where you, whatever is on your cell phone, will show up on your on your car uh, graphics interface. So you can literally control everything from the graphic, and you are seeing that. Then there are applications uh, uh, such that car connectivity. Uh, you can track your friend. So once you in, on the internet, you are you are really tracking your friend where he is on the road. I'm with a company named Soft Kinetic. What we're showing here today is we have a gesture-based solution for many different platforms. Um, what we're showing today is in the smart TV space. So we're showing a, a game called Dance Wall. It's similar to the Kinect technology that a lot of people are familiar with, but it's a more robust, scalable, cheaper, can be applied to many, many more applications. Um, and so we developed this stack. We took our camera, our middleware, and our application, and ran it on this Intel set-top box platform all alone. That runs very well. Um, it's a good experience, and we're starting to sell this application and the camera worldwide now. There's 2,300 unique notes, and we have these reusable paintballs that fly out and, and hit every one of them. So. As a ball, for example, hits the bass drum, we play a bass drum sound. So we're not playing just a soundtrack and watching something spectacular. We're actually playing an individual note each time a ball hits. The controller times it so that we shoot the ball out. Of course, it shoots the ball just a little bit before, and then when the ball makes contact with the uh, with whatever it is, the track or the drum, then yeah, we play the, that note through the speakers. If you have any questions about anything you see on this week's ITTV Into Tomorrow highlight video, or of course the three-hour radio show from the Intel Developer Forum, as always, we encourage you to call and participate on the program. Toll free from anywhere in North America, 1-800-899-INTO. That's 800-899-4686, or better yet, because you're tech savvy, Use our free Into Tomorrow app from your iPhone or Android phone and participate that way. We'd love to hear from you and we'll make sure and get your questions answered one way or another. Next week, we're back in our Miami studios, but we invite you to visit intotomorrow.com and see all the videos from the Intel Developer Forum and especially all the radio show interviews. Again, intotomorrow.com. I'm Dave Graveline from San Francisco and the rest of the Into Tomorrow team here. Thanks for tuning in and stay tuned. Don't forget if you... Mm. Broadcast from Intel Developer Forum is brought to you in part by... Oh, Brought to you in part by... That's nice. <laughs>